Hi, this is Larry Jordan. This is an excerpt of a power-up webinar on using Adobe Story to get ready for production. This focuses on how to get started with Adobe Story. You know, you've probably got Story installed on your hard disk, and even if you don't, you can access it for free on the web through a browser. And Story is one of those programs that if you don't know it's there, you don't go looking for it. What I wanted to do today is to give you some compelling reasons why you want to consider using Adobe Story even if you're already working with programs like Movie Magic or Final Draft because it can significantly help in the process of pre-production. And because of its integration with the rest of the Adobe suite, we have the ability to take something, start it in Story, and flow it through the rest of production and post-production as well. That's what we're going to be talking about today. By the way, we have a new subscription service. All our online video tutorials and webinars are now available via subscription. This is a great way to access all our online training. All our video tutorials, all our webinars, all our Adobe and Final Cut 10 training is available via subscription. For one low monthly fee, you get streaming access anywhere, anytime via the internet. Plus, subscribers can attend any of our live webinars for free. For more information, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. Adobe Story is a one-stop application for pre-production scripting, collaboration, documentation, organization, and scheduling for a wide variety of media projects. It began as Adobe CS Live. It was a service but it's since expanded to include both in the cloud and local hard disk versions. The key strength to Story is that it is tightly integrated with other programs in the Adobe Production Premium to provide a workflow from pre-production through final delivery. This is Adobe Story. It is displaying a sample project which is shipped by Adobe to help us learn how to use the software. It has two basic components, the project view, which you access by clicking on the word projects, and the authoring view, which we use when we're writing a script. I'll be showing you both in this webinar. On the left-hand side is a list of all the projects that we have and categories, which are collections of projects. Across the top are the different major groups of Things that we can do with our story, generate reports and manage lists, create something new, share it. We'll be talking about these in just a few minutes. And in the very top, notice that it says that I'm online. Although I'm running the hard disk based version of Story, when you start Story, it asks you to log in, and you log in using your Adobe ID. The Adobe ID is free, and you get it by going to story.adobe.com. And this allows Story to know who you are and which documents you want to access. You can work offline, so if you don't want to use the cloud and keep all of your documents stored locally, you can absolutely do that. You just can't have collaborators and you can't access them from any system except the system upon which you created them. Preferences, these allow you to set things like automatic backup, but works perfectly fine with the default preferences. I haven't changed them for this presentation. The help files are quite good. While the videos are a little less so, the written help text is excellent and helps you understand how the program works. You access it by clicking the down pointing arrow and then selecting the help files that you want. Because we are signed in, if we need to sign out, this takes us off the cloud. Now that we've got a basic orientation to the interface, let's start by creating a new project. There are three organizational terms you need to understand. One is a category, one is a project, and one is a document. A script is a document. So is a synopsis or a, a character bio. There's a variety of different documents that we can create inside Story. Scripts, documents, are stored inside projects. And projects are stored inside categories. For instance, let's say that a category is a client. I'm going to go to projects. Click on the downward pointing arrow. That's where you access menu choices. We're going to create a new category. We'll call it XYZ Client. 
Now, this is a corporate client that has lots of different projects they want me to create. There's, there's trade show script, demo scripts, and there's, there's videos that go up to the web. There's videos that go to their sales force. There's a lot of different things they want me to create. Well, one thing they want me to do is, is to create a series of viral videos which are comedic in nature, so people will enjoy watching them. So we're going to create a project. Go back to the downward pointing arrow. Select New Project. And I'm going to call this Comedy uh, Web Scripts, uh, Comedy Web Project. Okay, so now I've created a new project called Comedy Web Project. Because I had the client selected when I created the project, the project is automatically associated with that client. If I realize the project isn't a wrong client, simply grab it and drag it and put it on top of the client you want it in. I've got three of them now. Notice that there's a downward pointing arrow to the left of the name of the project when you click it. This gives us the ability to share the entire contents of the project. I'll be talking more about that in a minute. Archive it, which keeps it online but takes it off the list of active projects. I can rename it. I can delete it. I can remove it from this category. Well, in this particular case, I don't want it in the NAB News category because it's for a client in this case. So I'm going to say Remove from Category. It's now in the client folder, but it's not in the NAB News folder. And it's always in the All Projects list, so you can always find your projects here. Categories are simply an optional classification system that allows you to keep track of stuff as you start to develop more and more projects. This downward pointing arrow allows us to reveal or hide the contents of a particular folder, and a parenthetical number indicates how many projects are stored inside that particular category. Look at here. I'm clicking on the sample project. This is the one supplied by Adobe. Look at all the different documents that I've created. I've created a synopsis, some research which backs up the script that I've written. I have character bios. I have reports and schedules which I haven't created yet. I'll be getting to that in a few minutes. And I've created two scripts. In fact, when we go to create something new, let me select my comedy web project. Notice I've got no documents created. With the Comedy Web Project selected, I'll go up to the New menu and click it. There are a variety of things that we can create. For instance, I can create a typical film script, a two-column TV script, an AV script, a multi-column script, character bios and schedules and log lines, pitches, research, summaries, synopsis, just a free-form document that could contain anything. What we're doing here is we are working with various templates that control how our text is laid out. As you know, a film script has a very specific way of being formatted of where action is listed and parenthetical comments and characters and scene descriptions. Well, that template is built into story so that when you write something, it fits within that template. Well, let's create a new film script. So I'll select that. I'm going to call it My Film Script. And it's going to use the film template, and I click Create. After a few seconds, it's got the document created and opened up on our screen, and it starts with a title page. And there it is, my film script, written by me, based on hmm, my wild imagination. Bum, bum, bum. Well, I'm clearly based in Hollywood, so that's where I want to be anyway. So Hollywood, CA, and the phone number for anybody that wants to call and option this script, you can reach me instantly at my agent's phone number. So I've got my title page created, and now I go down here, and notice it's already giving me a hand. It says, Enter the Scene Heading. So I'm just going to click here, and I'm going to type I. It says, aha, you're probably wanting to start this with an interior shot. So I click it. It fills it in. Let's see. What's something that's completely shootable? Ah, we're going to put this in the viewer's imagination. They should be able to shoot that with no problem. Viewer's imagination. And I'm going to call this daytime. Let's see. Dash. What time is it? I'm going to say, I just pop up this menu. I'm going to say it's daytime. Hit the carriage return. There's my scene. Um, what do they call it? It's up here. It's a list. Scene heading. Okay, so that's the heading of my scene. These are the different things that we can put into our film script. An action, a character, a parenthetical comment. He said 
sternly. She said sadly, he said wistfully, I feel like I'm in the middle of a Tom Hardy novel and no one in this planet's old enough to remember that joke. Anyway, we're going to select an action here. Our hero strides into the room. Hmm. And looks around with a commanding gaze. Wow. Wow. There isn't going to be a dry eye in the theater. Look at that. What a great opening shot. Then, our next thing is we're going to start with a character. Go over to here. Select character. Our hero says, Ta-da. Let's see. Dialogue. Good. Ta-da. I'm here. Spoken in a heroic voice. And then the mayor says, well, as the mayor says, we are very glad to see you. All right, good. Well, it's the start of another Superman epic. It's going to be incredible. So what we've done is we've started to write our script. Well, a couple of other things you'll notice. Notice that it's helping with things like formatting. It knows the difference in interior and exterior. It knows difference between time of day. It's starting in the background to include metadata, which is information about your script. Now think about this. Let's say that I can take this script and all of its linked metadata, and I move that into Premiere. And I say, Premiere, show me every shot that was shot in the viewer's imagination scene. Without me having to go through and log it, it's pre-logged because the shots are automatically linked to the script. Or I want to say, show me all my day shots. Or what happens if I say, show me all the cast, all the scenes in which the mayor appears. Without me having to go through and read the script and do a hand-tallied list, this will automatically slice and dice it for you and say, well, the mayor is in scene one and scene three and scene 15. So we can now put all those scenes together in a single shooting day and bring the mayor in and get all those scenes accomplished with a minimum of muss and fuss. This is very cool and you've already got it on your system and if you don't, it's free. For the complete version of this webinar and all the details about Adobe Story, please visit my store at larryjordan.biz store.